right, so I was uh, just bringing up the topic of, of just having, working with family and... Yeah, I, had, I have six daughters and three of them have worked here. My oldest daughter's worked here for 40 years. Since mm. she started working, she was about 12 or 14 years old. Uh, and the other two daughters have kind of worked here too. It would be not the way to run most dental offices because most of my grandkids have been raised here. My kids brought their kids to work. They have a basement in the office. They played down the basement, watch TV. Uh, there's some people think that's an absolutely horrible way to run a dental office, but some of our patients thought it was wonderful to have <coughs> little kids run around the office. And we used to have a lot of children in our practice. They related to kids running around here. and. It's kind of been like one big family for our whole dental practice, basically. Not only my kids, but our patients. And we've had a pretty open office, allowing kids to come back and watch their parents have their teeth fixed or whatever, and try to let get them get acquainted with dentistry so they wouldn't be afraid of it. Because it's dentistry is really a family affair. Yeah. And I, th I felt very blessed to have my children work for me because, number one, I trusted them. We've had, they get along well, we all get along well, we don't have any backbiting, which is a common problem in offices from what I understand. And there's a lot of problems with embezzlement and stuff in different offices, I, I guess, and I've never had that problem at all. And it's just felt like, like a nice thing to do. Sounds to me like that's maybe one of the keys to you being able to continue to practice as long as you have. Well, it is a key because my children are still working for me. Their kids are, uh, my oldest grandson has two, two children now and he was raised here. He's in his thirties and, but it's a key because my children still come to work. They all work part time. They're very flexible in the time. If they need time off, they take time off. Uh, they cover for one another. I don't have a problem with people being mad at each other for any reason. They don't, there's no backbiting. Uh, it makes for a, energetically, I think, for a very pleasant place to be. And I think our patients feel that too. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and, and even the one or two of your staff people that, that aren't family, it seems like they've been here for quite some time. Yeah, my gal that does my, assists me at Chairside, work for me for 24 years. And she's part of our family. People ask her, she's my wife, no, she's not. But she's, she's just another family member. Yeah. Well, if, uh, don't mind just shifting gears back to the very first topic we started talking about before we started recording. You know, I mentioned to you, you know, you said, why are you, you know, you want to record this? Where are you going with this? And, and I said that I, I, I had a lot of very um, positive influences in my life growing up uh, in Utah, uh, Nevada, uh, for those those that don't live around here, don't realize how much of connection Utah and Nevada has had, um, kind of in sister states in a lot of ways. Idaho, you'd probably have to include in that. And uh, and I have acknowledged that you've been one of the influences in me, and you've been my dentist since I think we figured it was ninety two or something. We looked at my chart the other day, and and just. Being in Utah, this has been a pioneering area for nutrition and alternative health. These these electrodermal testing devices, largely that's been a Utah thing. The you know herbal medicine and and so forth and uh, homeopathy is you know Nevada has been one of the the main anchors really for contemporary homeopathy and such. And so you and I, this has just kind of been our environment that we've grown up in and. So I wanted to record you to help have other people kind of get a sense of, 
of some of these gifts that, that we've had or that you've been to me even. And another thing that you and I share is that we were both raised in a, uh, a religious system that was also very alternative and had a founder who was very much into energy work and, and, uh, and so forth. And, and that particularly being Mormonism, talking about Joseph Smith. We talked about how Joseph Smith and someone like L. Ron Hubbard, like some of these folks tend to get villainized because their work is taken into a religion and then everyone's got their opinions when it comes to religion. We talked a little bit about Edgar Cayce and, and so forth. And I'm just kind of giving all this background. I would just just kind of like to to hear some of your overall thoughts about um, like what you've learned as far as the role of spirituality, energy, um, personal inspiration. If you're open to sharing a couple of the hard lessons you've learned in life that you've gotten through um, to the other side of. Well, I think probably the main thing that's had the most influence on me, I'm not going to share the exact experience that I did have, but I had a very spiritual experience back in the early 80s. But what I learned from that experience is basically something that we have all been taught in our religious upbringing is number one, ask, seek, knock, and most important, listen. And as a, as a healthcare professional, you know it for yourself, because you just made a comment a few minutes ago about your wife and her thyroid, the way you came up with the solution was by listening. Uh, Hugh Milne wrote a book, who's an osteopath that te teaches craniosacral therapy on the heart of listening. And basically, I think, even though we may not intentionally know we're doing this, we've been taught to listen to that still small voice. And you do this every day whether you really know you're doing it or not. But the other piece of that that comes to me that and I'm sure you've had the same experience is that you learn to start obeying what you hear, even if you don't know why, and trusting and having the faith that that's going to lead you where you need to go. And we are so bombarded today with so much uh, marketing <clears throat> that I think you can lose yourself in following everything you hear without listening to whether it's really for your highest good to do that. And I think my experience has been the last 30, 40 years, 30 years I guess at least, of always trying to ask the question, is it for my highest good to do this? And then trusting that if you get a yes answer, I don't care how you ask the question, that's your own personal way to do it. Uh, it may seem like it's, you don't know why it's for your highest good, but I'll do it anyway. I'll have to say I've had experiences that I wonder, was this really for my highest good? But then the other question is, what have I learned from that experience? Because our life here is about learning. Some people don't. I mean, I'm not a huge seeker. I don't. I haven't done the research that you've done. I haven't done all the. Been down the same path you're on, but we're not all on the same path anyway. Uh, we're on our own path. We all came here, I think, for our own purpose to do whatever we could to help mankind, and to help ourselves. And <clears throat> I think, you know, what I've tried to do in my own practice is just be of service to our patients. It's not about the money. 
<clears throat> it's not about living a high life. It's about what you can do to serve. However that looks to you. I think that's, that's just the bottom line of it all. Yeah, you really express that beautifully, and I, I would have to uh, to say that the, the, a single greatest gem that I've discovered in my life it's it's really what you've experienced, what you've expressed about about just listening and and having the courage to go with those yeses. And yeah, I've gotten in trouble a few times. And I've come out of it probably a better person, I guess. <laughs> At least had some different experiences. I've made lots of mistakes in my life. As we all have, we all make different mistakes. We're not perfect. We're, we're spiritual beings trying to have a human experience, and uh, not human beings trying to have a spiritual experience. I think we get it backwards sometimes instead of realizing what our life's really all about. And as far as whatever profession you choose, I don't care what profession it is, whether it be dentistry, chiropractic, nutrition, we've all got, I think, one purpose, and that's to be of service to our fellow man. How have you gotten past your mistakes? Sometimes I... I had an experience the other day uh, that reminded me of, of a time where I was really rather harsh with my children. And, uh, and boy, it took me an hour or two of just, I just, it just brought all that back for me. And I just felt so much weight and just kind of regret. And, I, and I'm just like, wow, I, I really, really wish I'd always just been this saint with my, my children every day. And, and I'm like, and, and you know, I, I was able to work through it, had Megan do some work with me and, and so forth. But how, what have you learned? I think all of us struggle with this a little bit. I, I don't know what I've learned, actually. You know, I still struggle with this a lot, feeling guilty for things I've done or haven't, haven't done. Uh, just try to learn to forgive myself as much as I can and realize that it's okay. I think... One of the things that really helped me turn my life around a long time ago, I, I think, was a book called The Results Book. It's no longer in print. It came from a, from a course called Alpha Awareness, written by Wally Minto, who's since passed away. But the book basically had this premise was, everything's okay. And our brains, have this right and wrong concept. It's either right or it's wrong. Well, as soon as you're wrong, quote, in your mind, you keep feeling guilty and keep beating yourself up because you did it wrong. Instead of saying, it's okay, what, what is it I'm supposed to learn from this experience? And move on and that's I think everybody struggles with that it's basically what it has to do with is learning to love ourselves and allow everybody else to do the same thing our kids didn't come with a set of instructions I raised my first three kids totally I got six kids there's nine years between my third and fourth child I was a real harsh father for my first three kids. My last three, I've been much more lenient, much more understanding, I think. And I'm not sure my first three have ever totally forgiven me, forgiven me for what, how I raised them, but the last three were raised them. But I was in a different space then. I had had more life experience, but I had some experiences that made me realize that that I have to be kinder to them and more, and more uh, allow them to make their own choices, not tell them how they're supposed to think, what they're supposed to believe. Uh, 
that segues us a little bit to another topic that we kind of started off tape, and that was kind of the, the religious or spiritual path or just personal life path. You were saying something along the lines of it's about finding what like works for you rather than feeling like everyone has to fit a certain mold or what have you. Did you re remember what we were talking about? Not exactly, but the same thing is true, you know. Our religious teaching taught us that the fall of the straight is a gate and narrow the way. Well, that connotates that we're all supposed to be going the same direction. I don't believe that anymore. I think we all have our own path. We're probably all heading to the same place. And our path may be straight, but it may be a lot of twists and turns in it. But we're all totally individual. And I, th I think the problem we have as parents, for instance, we want our kids all to do it this way. Because this is, I'm the father, or whatever, I'm the parent, and I want you to do it this way. Well. How can we all do it? We don't all believe, we don't feel the same. You just go back to our health. We don't all feel the same. We don't all have the same reaction to the same things. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of people out there that have a mouthful of mercury, who have root canals, who have spines out of place, the neck's off. Are they still alive? Yeah, are they doing okay? Probably are. Do we need, do they all need to be fixed? I don't know. Who said they had to be fixed? You know, I think I think what I've learned most of all is that love is accepting people who they are, where they are, and where they're going. And as, as we can learn to do that more, we can learn to accept ourselves more. Because when we point the finger at somebody, we got three pointing at ourselves. And we're always doing this, it seems like. And we're making judgments that we were admonished centuries ago to not judge one another. And we just can't seem to stop it. <laughs> And I think that's what allowing everything to be okay really means, is you're okay the way you are. If you want to change, that's fine. If you don't want to, that's okay too. And how do you balance that, that perspective of everything is okay and everyone's just kind of going on their path with, you know, I, I've got a contribution that I could really make. I've, I've learned some things in my life. I would, I would have liked to have known, you know, to kind of shorten my path of suffering before right. I kind of moved beyond that. How, how, do you, how have you kind of sought to, to bring those two together? I, I think, you know, when I say everything is okay, well, some things aren't okay, you know, like blowing people up. But at the same time, what are you going to do? Are you going to stress yourself over the whole thing? I think it's just a day-to-day -day thing. I think you just have to learn to live one day at a time, sometimes one minute at a time, because you know it can change in a heartbeat. So I, I, I think you just I, don't know, I think it takes your whole life to do this. I think we can beat ourselves up because we. What we know today and what we do today is different than what we knew 20 years ago or even last week. And I think it's just, you just have to work at it. You just have to talk yourself out of it. Yeah. I don't think there is a simple answer. I think we have to change our way of thinking about things. And that's not always an easy thing to do. I think we have, again, we have to listen, and we probably have to contemplate it and decide if that's appropriate for us. You know, you can use muscle testing. I do all the time. Is that the most accurate thing? I don't know. 
I used to use a pendulum all the time. You ever done that? Yes. I used to yeah, I grew it. up with that. I used to use yeah. that all the time. That's what got me started with all this stuff, I think. Or at least what, what moved me along this path to some of the things I've experienced in my life. But I, you know, I took it up and like a duck to water for some reason. I've recently become exposed to uh, a researcher that put some uh, sensors on the flexor muscles, the arm, and then put a sensor on the pendulum, and then would have them test. And obviously the pendulum, you know, whether how it moves gives you kind of a yes-no type right. of thing. And it would test whether the muscles in the arm moved before the pendulum or vice versa. And they found that the muscles always moved in the arm first. So the conclusion was that the pendulum is actually an exaggeration of what the body is doing. That we're actually using our body as the testing instrument, but we're, we're able to see the change in our body magnified with right, the pendulum. pendulum movement. And I, that cleared up a lot of things for me I was trying to understand. Because like, yeah, my dad would, uh, would use a pendulum a little bit uh, here and there as a, a kid in relation to supplements. Well, they also, one of the things that I've learned, and maybe you have too, is you have to keep your mind clear. You have to have the right intent. Because you know very well you can influence all that. And I, I guess I was blessed in one sense because I couldn't feel energy. <laughs> oh, do I relate to this one? <laughs> I couldn't feel it. Yeah. I can't. I couldn't feel the bones in the head move. Mm -hmm. I could not do it. I came home from Viola's course so frustrated because I went there with a preconceived idea because I'd been told how all this works. And I couldn't feel it. And after an experience I had, I got the impression, the reason you can't feel it, because we don't want your mind involved in it. Stay out of it. Okay. <laughs> Just put your hand here. And the same thing with muscle testing. You probably, maybe you haven't had this experience, but I had, had so many experiences with people coming here who had uh, been sold a box full of vitamins by somebody that used muscle testing to determine all their needs. And when I tested them, half of them were not necessary. But I still remember my first experience with George Eversall. He had a, what he called a diet experiment, which he had you eliminate corned wheat, milk, red meat, sugar from your diet for 14 days. He'd do muscle testing before and then had you do, do the diet experiment, come back and see what had changed sometimes everything had changed. You didn't need all that stuff anymore. So it's like, well, so what is this? But it's just, you have to give the body a chance to change its mind, <laughs> to quit putting stuff in it that's not appropriate for it. But I think sometimes we get so toxic, we don't know what's good and what's not. <laughs> That's why I think you have to learn, why you have to kind of learn from whatever perspective you're approaching people from, what their process is. Not what your process is, what theirs is. You know, it's kind of, well, I think the bottom line is we need to get our ego out of the way. 
Yeah, I have a, a patient that, uh, as you may know, I haven't taken any new patients for a few years, and so it's just some some patients from years before that I I still see now and again. And there's this one patient that, and if she watches this tape, she'll know just what I'm talking about. Who's not fit any mold, like every kind of regimen, every systematic approach that I kind of use that. It helps to make, you know, give some structure to care. None of it. And I've just watched her continue to do better and better and better. And and like you said, I just realized that she's just, she's had her own, her own path. And uh, to just to, to create room for that and yeah. allow that. And and I, I really appreciate what you mentioned before, how in the beginning you couldn't feel energy. And I, I, I remember in, chiropractic school the instructor saying wow this person's neck if you're ever going to feel a vertebral subluxation in your life it's right here because it man this is like a Mack truck packed you know parked on someone's neck here you're going to feel it and everyone goes in front of me like oh yeah and I go up and I'm like I can't feel anything <laughs> I, I about wanted to cry here I'm in chiropractic school I can't feel this like what do I do now and yep. And uh, over time, obviously, that you know that came. But I I found that there's a time for intellect, and there's a time to just shut up and listen. Yeah. And and they, even though sometimes it'll it'll look like when I'm working, I'm blending the two. I really don't ever blend the two. I go back and forth right. between the two because to really listen, like you said. Our, our preconceptions, our agendas, like all of that, have to it has to be quiet. Yeah. 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 Well, this has really, really been a treat. Thank you. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Well, thank, you're welcome. Thank you for, taking, for asking. taking time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the thought just occurred to me the other day. And and you're busy, and I'm busy. I'm glad that this day worked. And uh, you're just really a beautiful man. And You've there's a lot of beauty in your life and and uh, you're a bit of a sage. It's really <laughs> been nice to capture a lot of this. Thank you. I yeah. I feel really blessed, actually. Yeah. I have never I've been really blessed because I've never missed a day's work for being sick in all the years I've been in practice. I've missed because of surgery, the surgeries I've had, but I've never, never had to take off work because I've been sick. Yeah. Even though I've worked around sick people all these years, I just feel very, very blessed to have had that bit of help. I just hope it continues. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> I look forward to, uh, I look forward to another twenty-three years of having you as my dentist. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you again. Well, thank you.